We've been talking a lot about Spring for GraphQL lately, and that's because it's such an exciting new project in the Spring portfolio. Now that you know how to build out your GraphQL APIs, if you don't, there's some links below. You're probably asking yourself, Dan, how do I test these APIs? And that's exactly what we're gonna answer today, and we'll do it right after this. Welcome back everyone. My name is Dan Vega and I'm a Spring Developer Advocate for VMware. Today we're talking about testing your GraphQL APIs, but real quick, if you're new around here and you don't know about me, you can head over to danvega.dev. I have a whole bunch of free content there. A newsletter that you can sign up for every two weeks or so right now is what I'm delivering that on. Uh, you'll get some information in your inbox. And a whole bunch of free articles, courses, videos, etc., and as well as a speaking tab if you want to keep up to date with where I am speaking and what I am talking on. So with that, we're talking about Spring for GraphQL today. If you head over to spring.io slash projects slash spring dash GraphQL, there is a landing page here that tells you a little bit about it. If you go under the learn section and you go under the reference doc, if you go in there, there is a whole section on testing. This is what we're going to be covering today. I'm going to walk you through an example of what we are working on. We are going to continue working on a project that we did in the last video where we built out this CRUD GraphQL API. If you didn't catch that, I'll have a link up here and a link in the description below. This is the repository that we're looking at, though. This is slash GraphQL dash test. There are some different branches on here. Uh, there is a, there's going to be a test starter that you can go ahead and start with. That's what we're gonna start with, which is basically the end of the last video that had those CRUD operations in. So we'll take that CRUD API and we'll figure out how we're gonna write some tests for it. So what I'm gonna do, uh, clone that, I'm gonna open up in IntelliJ IDEA and we'll get right to work. All right, so here we are in IntelliJ. Again, I will leave a link in the description below to the repository. As you can see in the lower right hand corner, I am working on a test starter branch. If you wanna follow along, you can. If not, you can just go over to the master branch and see the final code. So let's just walk through this real quick in case you missed that last one, uh, just to kind of set you up with what the project is that we're working on. So we have this main application class. I have this coffee service. And so this creates a in-memory list of coffees. And then we just have some CRUD, mes CRUD methods around it, uh, like find all. Uh, we have a way to find one, create, update, delete. And then we have this init method, which adds three coffees into our coffees array. So from there, we have a coffee model, which is a record, just has an ID, name, and size. That size is an enum. If you uh, frequently visit Starbucks, you will recognize these. These are our sizes for our coffee. Then we have a coffee controller, which is just our CRUD GraphQL API, giving us the ability to find all, find one, create, update, and delete. And again, this maps to our GraphQL schema, which is located here. And this just has a object type for coffee in size. Uh, we have queries for find all and find one, and then we have mutations for create, update, and delete. So I'm not going to run that. Um, again, you can go back and watch that video if you want. What we're going to talk about is creating a test for this coffee controller. So what I want to do is, as you can see, there is no test in here. Well, there's the generated test, which we'll get rid of. But what I want to do is create an integration test for this coffee controller. So what I can do is go generate and I'll say test, and we'll use JNIT5, and I'm gonna say this is an integration test, and we'll just click OK from there. And so what we wanna do now is take advantage of the, gra the testing support in GraphQL. So if we go down to our palm.xml, what you'll notice is when you go ahead and choose Spring for GraphQL from the Spring Initializer, one of the things that you'll get here is this dependency, so Spring GraphQL test. Uh, this is going to bring in a lot of the testing support that you're gonna need. Now what we're gonna be testing today is just the GraphQL uh, layer. We aren't gonna be testing the transport layer. So again, we have different transport layers like HTTP, uh, RSocket, WebSocket. But if you were gonna test the HTTP layer, 
then you will want to bring in, say, the Webflux uh, dependency because that uses web client underneath the hood. So this dependency, again, gets brought in for you when you select it from the initializer, so you won't need to add it. I just wanted to point that out. So the first thing that this gets us, though, is we can come in here and we can say at GraphQL test. So what is this? Uh, let's go ahead and hit download sources and get a little bit of an explanation here. So this is an annotation to perform GraphQL tests focusing on GraphQL request execution without that web layer and only loading a subset of the application configuration. So if that sounds familiar, it should. If you've done any testing in Spring before, we have this concept of slice tests. And slice tests say, hey, I know you want to write this test. You're really focused on this one thing and you don't want to load the entire application context, context, especially when your application is going to get bigger because that's going to slow everything down. We want these tests to be fast as possible. We want that immediate feedback to tell us if we're doing something. If it, I don't know about you, but if it takes too long, I'm, not, I'm less likely to write tests. So I want that immediate feedback. So the annotation disables full auto configuration and only loads the relevant components. So it does not load things like at component service or repository. So if you need those, like we will today, uh, we're going to have to bring those in. Okay. So that's a slice test. That's what that gives us. We can also say, hey, I want to focus on one thing here, and that's the coffee controller. So I'm just focused on one controller. You don't need to load everything up. Um, I'm just focused on that single one. So when we do this, we are going to get an instance of what is known as the GraphQL tester. So we can say GraphQL tester, GraphQL tester. So what this is going to help us do is if we look at this. Um, so this is defining a workflow to test our requests that is independent of the underlying transport. So again, we don't care if you've chosen HTTP or WebSocket or RSocket, we're gonna test just kind of that GraphQL API layer, which is exactly what we wanna do. So what I can do in here is I'm gonna go ahead and write a test to test find all coffee should return all coffees. So let's do that. Now, what we want to do is we want to start with that query. So we're going to write a query to get um, all the information from a coffee. So again, looking at the uh, GraphQL schema, a coffee has ID, name, and size. So we're going to say string document is equal to, and then we're going to use our, um, uh, our, text, our text blocks here so we don't have to kind of uh, do that on multiple lines. We can have just, uh, this is a Java, I want to say 16 feature or later, uh, but using those triple double quotes, we can now just have multiple lines of a string. So we're going to write our query. And so our query looks like this, but as you can see, as I'm starting to type here, I'm not getting any like code assists. I don't know if, I, if what I'm typing is correct. So I'm going to show you a little tip that I picked up from someone on Twitter. Again, I'll link to that tweet below. I'm not taking credit for this. Someone actually uh, showed me this on Twitter, and I'm very appreciative of that. So in IntelliJ, if you come in here and, and you have the GraphQL plugin for IntelliJ, you can create a new file. Um, well, I think I already have it. So you can create a new GraphQL config. And the GraphQL config is just saying, let's say testing. And this just points to, hey, where's the schema path? That is schema.graphqls. And here's the extension. Here's the um, default endpoint. And this just creates this file. If you do that, and then also come in here and say language equals GraphQL, now what happens, let's see if we get some help here. You see we start typing, we get some help, and we're going to say find all. And as we start to type this, you can see on the left, the name of that query is find all. On the right, the return type is a collection of coffees. So I can say find all. Um, that wasn't the greatest line split there. 
But as I start typing now, I can get some IntelliSense and that really helps me out in creating these. So this query, this thing is called a document. So you can name your variable, whatever you want, obviously, but I'm calling it a document here. And now that we have that query, we wanna go ahead and test that query, right? So we are going to use that GraphQL tester and we're going to say the document that I wanna test is that document that I created up there. And I want you to go ahead and execute it. So when you execute it, the path is going to be uh, find all, that is what is returned. And then what we wanna do is it's going to return an entity list. What is that entity list made up? Well, it's made up of coffees. So that is the model. And all we're testing is, hey, I wanna make sure that we get three back. So again, this is an integration test. We are actually um, calling the controller, which is going to call the service, uh, which is going to um, go ahead and return three of those. So if we go ahead and now I think we're gonna run into one more issue, right? So I'm going to run into an issue, but I just wanna show it to you as we um, go ahead and run this. So let's go ahead and run our test. I'm gonna say test, and then let's run this. So what is going to happen here is parameter zero of constructor in our controller required a bean of type coffee service. So if we go back to that controller, we have a constructor that takes a coffee service. So we need to, again, remember, because we're running this slice test here, this GraphQL test, uh, things annotated with at service are not getting loaded into the application context. So we have an easy fix for that. We can go ahead and say, I want you to go ahead and import this one class that I'm gonna need and that class is the coffee service. And so if we do that and we run our test, we should be good to go. So, so far, so good. We have a single test that is going to find all coffees. And in this case, there are three and we're gonna return those. And again, this is an integration test, right? We're not mocking out the coffee service. We really could and just do that in here um, for it you know, more of a unit test, uh, but I find that this is uh, gonna satisfy my requirements. So the next thing we wanna do, again, we wanna really kind of test all of these. So the next one we wanna uh, write a test for is the find one method. All right, so let's write another test. We're gonna say test and void and valid ID should return coffee. So if we pass in a valid ID, we expect to get a valid coffee back. So again, I'm going to start with this language. So I have a little uh, live template to cheat on this so I don't have to type this out every time. So language equals GraphQL. This will allow me to say string document is equal to um, that. And really, you know what I should do is create a live template for this. This should be my entire template, not just language equals GraphQL. But we'll do that another day. So now we have a document and we want to write our query for find, find one. So that is going to take an argument. Uh, that is going to take an argument of, oh, so we're going to have to set this up. Uh, let's do this. So let's say find one. And we will say that this is going to take a variable or an argument of name ID, and it's gonna be of type ID. And then in here, I'm going to say that ID is going to be equal to whatever our ID is. So here, we're gonna go ahead and move that down. And again, this is gonna return a copy, so I'll just get ID, name, and size. So that is our document, that's what we're gonna test. So we're gonna use our GraphQL tester again. So GraphQL tester dot document. And I love this Fluent API, uh, it just makes testing so um, you know, readable and easy to work with, uh, I really enjoy it. So before we execute this, as we did before, so in this one above, we executed it. Before we do that, 
we can pass in a variable. So that variable, the name is going to be ID, and then the value is going to be one. So this could be one, two, or three, because we have three in our system. In the next test, well, maybe we could write one where the, we pass in an ID like 99, and it doesn't bring one back, right? Now that we've done that, we can execute it. Uh, again, the path is what is being returned, and that is find one. This is going to return back a single entity, and that is going to be of type coffee. And then what we want to do is we want to see if it satisfies. So as you can see, satisfies takes a consumer. So now what we can do is we can say coffee. And inside of here, we can do some assertions. So what I'll do is assert equals. And I want to say that I want to make sure that what is our first one? I think it's Cafe Americano. I want to make sure that that equals that, and that is the coffee.name. Because remember, this coffee right here that we're getting is a record. That's why we call that name on it. I also want to make sure that the size, so size is dot grande, and that will be coffee.size. So that should be all we're doing. So we're testing again, just to, we're testing this find one. Find one accepts an argument of type ID. Uh, so we're passing in one, we're executing that. What we get back has find one. It should be, we should be able to turn that into a coffee entity. And when we do, these assertions are run. So let's go ahead and test that out. And great, that worked. So now we've been able to test find all and find one. If we look back at our coffee controller, the next thing we'll want to do is test the create method. The next test we want to write is for our create method. So we're going to start out with the test annotation. We'll say void should create new, new coffee. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll start again with our lang equals GraphQL. Say string document is equal to that. I wish this indentation would be right. Um, and then I wish I could spell, so let's fix that. So we have a string document. So we are going to create a mutation now. We are not working with reading. We're actually uh, changing something. So this is what we're going to use a mutation for. So the mutation is going to be called create. It's going to take in some arguments. One is name, which is a string. One is a size, which is of type size. So from there, uh, we will say our create method and we'll say name is equal to whatever we get from name and size is whatever we get from size. So in here, uh, so the create method actually returns back a coffee. So again, we may want to see the ID. Uh, we'll just say ID name and size again. All right, so now that we have that document, we're going to use our GraphQL tester. We're going to say that this is the document. Uh, so here, just as we have in every one of our tests so far. Now we need to pass in some variables. So here's our variable. What is the name of the variable? The name of the variable in this case is name. Um, in this case, we are going to create a cafe latte. Uh, we'll need another variable. Oops, variable. And so we'll need a variable for size, and that is going to be of type size.grande. So now that we've passed our variables in, uh, we can go ahead and execute this. So let's say dot execute. And what we get back from the path is going to be uh, create. Again, what we get back is an entity of type coffee. Then what we need to do is, again, satisfy. So satisfies. And we're going to satisfy that our coffee that comes back uh, passes a couple of assertions. So uh, there's that. Um, Again, this is pretty similar to what we've done before. So I'm just gonna copy this in here. I think I have a 
typo there. Uh, so again, our assertions are, hey, we want to make sure that that coffee ID is not null because that gets generated by the service. We want to make sure that the name is cafe latte and the size is grande. Now, one other thing, so this will work. This should work, right? Let's go ahead and run this. Cool. So now one other thing I'd like to test is, um, you know, once we add this, once we create this, I want to make sure that it's getting added to the collection. So I need to somehow get the current count and then make sure the current count of the collection went up by one. So one way that I can do that here is I'm gonna say at auto wired coffee service, coffee service, and now I can use that coffee service to say, give me the current count. So current, current coffee count is equal to the coffee service dot find all dot size. So that will give us the current one. So then what I also want to say is that the um, assert equals, and we want to say that, hey, that current coffee count plus one is basically what we're at now. So I want to say coffee service dot find all dot size. So now we're just saying, hey, that current coffee count, let's say it was three, uh, it should be equal to three plus one. And let's go ahead and call that service now after we've created this and let's see if we've added a new one to the collection. Let's go ahead and run this. And it did not work. Let's see what's happening here. So the expected is four, the actual is three. Uh, let's find out what happened here. So this is our current copy count, find all dot size. And that should be, so the expected was four, the actual was three. Why have we not added this one to the coffee collection? Oh wow, I just realized that I put this in the wrong method. You probably caught that while you were watching and I did not. So this needs to go in this method, not the uh, valid ID should return a coffee. So here we are, and now if we go ahead and do this, now we will create one. Hopefully this runs correctly. There we go. Okay, so that was just a mistake by me. Sorry about that. So the next thing we want to test is the update. So similarly, similarly, um, this is going to take a name and a size, but it's also going to take an integer for the ID. So it's taking three arguments, it's calling the coffee service and updating it based on that. So what we can do here is go ahead and say at test, and we will say void should update existing coffee. All right, and then we'll do that. And I think a lot of this, both the update and delete are gonna be similar to create. Uh, so I'm gonna just kind of paste some code in here, which you should never do, don't copy and paste. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll save some time here. Oh, I copied the wrong thing. So let's, let's back out of there and just copy what we need and just paste what we need, Dan. Okay, so here we are. Again, we're taking a similar approach. We wanna get a current coffee. So we use a copy service to find one. We're passing in the ID of one. That actually returns an optional. We know one exists, so I'm just going to call get on it. Uh, again, working with optionals, this kind of defeats the purpose, but okay. Um, so again, we have our document. We have a mutation for updating. This time it's going to take an ID, a name, and a size. Um, and then we'll go ahead and return a copy. So this is the information we want to display. Similar to create, we're just passing in the document. We have three variables now that we need to set. We're executing the um, GraphQL API. We're getting back an endpoint or we're getting back an update in the path. And then that is going to return the entity coffee. Then what we're doing is saying, okay, go ahead and go out to the coffee service and get that one again. And now the, t the name and the size should be updated to the new values. All right, so let's see if this works. 
Great. Okay, and so finally, what we'll want is we want to test to void should remove copy. And again, just going to paste some code in here. Um, nothing that interesting, different from what we've been doing. So give me a current count uh, from the copy service. Again, we have a document. Here's our mutation, which is delete. Simply takes an ID. Uh, again, has to return something. Uh, I wish he could return void in certain situations like this one, or at least maybe a Boolean and just say, yes, it was deleted. Never, nevertheless, here we are. So in this case, we're going to call GraphQL uh, tester. We'll pass in the document. We'll pass in our ver uh, variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call execute and verify, which is a little different than we have been doing, right? All we're doing is executing the GraphQL request and verifying the response contains no errors. So if that's the case, we should be pretty certain that what we're trying to do here works. And so what we could do is do that same assertion we did on the create method and say, uh, give me the current count minus one. And that's exactly what I was hoping um, the new count is going to be. And there we go. So um, there's that. Here's all our tests. So we created tests for all of our CRUD methods and our list method. And again, that, that worked well. So in this instance, we are not testing against any kind of server transport, no HTTP, nothing. We're just kind of testing that GraphQL execution layer. And so if you're interested in how the HTTP tests work, I will go ahead and either include a test here or include a link over to uh, some other tests that I've written uh, that do cover that. So I think that's all we're going to cover today. I know it's probably going a little long here, um, but I hope you found something useful here. Again, we all know testing is important. Uh, we don't do it enough. If it's hard to do, we don't want to do it. In this instance, it's pretty easy to do. We get this nice slice test. We get this nice GraphQL tester component that gives us this nice fluent API for writing our tests. And it's very legible. Even if you've never seen uh, these tests before, you could come in and take a look at this test and probably figure out what's going on, right? Um, and that's one thing I like about it. So. As always, friends, I hope you got something valuable out of this. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.